Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Thank you, each one, for being here today. Thank you, everyone who is joining us on Facebook Live. Uh, we've come this morning to worship Jesus and to look to him for our help. And let's start that way with just a word of prayer this morning. Lord Jesus, thank you for your love and grace, your mercy, and the everlasting hope that we have in you. Jesus, come in your power and strength and glory this morning through the anointing of your Holy Spirit and touch our lives and work in us today. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, th this morning, if you have offering, uh, the offering box is out there in the foyer, and you can, you can take it out there. If you're viewing online and want to give tithes and offerings, you can send it to Post Office Box 670, Davenport, Washington, 99122. And uh, just wanted to remind you of that. We're, this Wednesday, we'll be having our evening service at 7 o'clock. Come and join us or join us on Facebook Live, whichever works for you. And uh, all the services are also on YouTube at Harvest Celebration Church and on Right Now Media. For those of us that are on that, through, through the church uh, website at Right Now Media. Also want to mention that we had uh, <clears throat> this week, on top of everything else, <laughs> we had a group come from Libby, Montana with uh, a whole bunch of clothing. And I don't mean maybe. Uh, the church basement is nearly full of clothes for from infants all, all the way up. And it, it's basically they were donating it for the fire victims. And so if you know of anyone who lost their home, lost everything, we would really love to give them first shot without a doubt. And uh, so make sure you let anyone know that we have. And that's not the only resources we have. We have some other resources that we can help out with in a, in a very tangible way. So uh, let us know if you know of anyone who needs help in any way with, with that sort of thing. Well, we are here, not here in this place, although here in this place, but uh, we're here on this planet to share hope through serving Jesus by serving others. And we wanna do that all the time. And our attitude should be the same as Jesus Christ, who was a servant, had the very nature of a servant. And we wanna uh, have that same servant's heart that Jesus had. We can do that because the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us and quickens us. And uh, also remind you most Sunday mornings of verses from 1 Thessalonians 5, rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and there's a whole bunch more right there in those verses starting at verse 16 that just remind us of some really good things that we can do every day. And a great way to start your day by looking at those verses and working on them in and through your life. And then uh, I've added recently another verse for us to think about and remember from Zechariah 4, 6. This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And uh, that's, how, that's how we go about our lives. Uh, so this morning... Uh, just a time of worship. I encourage you to stand with us today, stand here, <laughs> and even if you're at home in your living room uh, on Facebook, stand and, and worship this morning if you can. If you're more comfortable sitting down, do that too, but just worship Jesus as we're led by the team this morning. Amen. Worship some intentional things, so let's, uh, let's give it a shot this morning, right? Yeah. 
hundred more times. <laughs> Jesus. 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 you're here or at home watching if you have a situation that you need help in I, I just I challenge you to speak the name of Jesus into that situation right now and I and really truly speak his name out loud Jesus Jesus Jesus, this morning we come to you and many of us are hurting in so many different ways and some of us have had a rough few weeks, some of us have had a rough longer than that and our nation has had a rough several months and the world and we say, Jesus, today, Jesus, right now, Jesus, we call on you because it's the greatest name that ever was and ever will be Jesus you are the answer and right now Jesus we ask you to bring healing bring healing to this land bring healing to this world bring healing to our emotions bring healing to our hearts and hurts and bring healing to our physical bodies Jesus Jesus, it is your name and you're the only name. Jesus, there's a lot of people that need salvation. They need to understand who that name really is. And this morning we call upon you for our family 
and friends who are not walking with you. And we speak Jesus into their lives because they need Jesus today. He's the only answer. He's the only one. Jesus, your great name. You're the only one. And at some point in time, every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus, I pray that today people will speak your name and ask for grace and mercy before it's too late. So I call on you for salvation, Lord Jesus. I ask you to send someone into people uh, send, send someone to them right now to speak the life and hope of Jesus to them right now so that they can call on that great name of Jesus. Thank you for salvation today, Lord Jesus. Thank you that we can trust, put our complete hope in you today. We give you honor. Thank you, Jesus. It really, truly, you take care of every need that we have, and we can look to you today for whatever it is that we have need of. And we do call on you right now and ask for help in each and every situation in our lives. Today, Jesus, we ask again that you'd meet us here in this place through the power, presence, and anointing of your Holy Spirit. Touch our lives, speak into our hearts, Help us to be more like you, to become the people that you've called us to be. And we ask it in that great name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Jesus. What a great name. Actually, I think if I didn't say anything else, we've really had church today, just Jesus. I've told you a lot of times that if you ever come and you don't hear about Jesus, let me know right away because that's, that's why we're here. We're here to hear about Jesus. <laughs> and uh, um, there's times in life when uh, it comes right down to it and and you just uh, you just kind of wonder how how does anybody make it without Jesus, and uh, how does anybody make it without the power of the Holy Spirit in your lives? And boy, there's been a lot of memories flooding through in the last uh, several weeks, and and this took me clear back to Gil and Amy's wedding. June 5th, 1995, June 3rd, 1995. And then I was supposed to preach June 4th. Whew, I had a whole bunch of people telling me, you can't do that. But I already, w oddly enough, I already knew what I was going to preach on. Oh, explain what happened it, for those of you that don't know. <laughs> right before Gil and Amy's wedding, Daddy decided to make it about him. <laughs> and uh, he decided to leave us. I mean, really, truly, like 20 minutes before the wedding was supposed to start, he... Wow, he died. <laughs> and uh, 
and then we did the wedding and all of that happened and we didn't tell Gil and Amy till later. And, uh, and the next day I was supposed to preach and I knew what I was going to preach on. I knew I was going to preach on, because the next day was actually Pentecost Sunday and I knew I was going to preach on the power of the Holy Spirit in our, in our lives and I knew that by the time it all came around and some people said, you can't do it today and I said oh I have to <laughs> and uh, and 12 people were filled with the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in other tongues that Sunday morning and uh, and I knew I was doing what I was supposed to be doing and and I knew I was doing it only one way and that was through the power of the Holy Spirit and so all that came back to me flooding back in a lot of ways <coughs> and uh, <laughs> then Believe it or not, this morning I said, Brandon, what are you preaching on today? And he said, I'm not a preacher. And, uh, and uh, he's looking across the table at me, and, I, and uh, then he started giving me these ideas, and, and a couple of them had already gone through my mind, and one of them was the power of the Holy Spirit. And so uh, here I am 20 minutes later, no, <laughs> uh, uh, two hours later, I'm, I'm going to tell you about the power of the Holy Spirit in a person's life this morning. We are empowered to impact the world around us. That is, that's why we're here, and that's why the Holy Spirit came on those people's lives in Acts chapter 22. Um, but I'll begin with this, uh, this story, because there's a lot of people out there today that have this whole misunderstanding of power, and this is just kind of a funny story. Um, uh, it goes, one day a large male lion decided to make sure that all the other animals knew he was the master of the jungle. So he went to the gazelle and roared, who's the king of the jungle? Should have Wendell say that because he's got way better voice. Uh, Why you are mighty lion. He went to the zebra and roared, who is the king of the jungle? Fearful, the zebra answered, why you are mighty lion. Then he went to the monkey and roared, Who's the king of the jungle? Startled, the monkey answered, Why, you are, O mighty king. Finally, full of himself, he went to the elephant and roared, Who's the king of the jungle? The elephant reached out and grabbed the lion with his trunk, whirled him around in the air like a top, body slammed him to the ground several times. Then he flattened him against the large boulder. The beaten, bruised, and battered lion struggled to his feet. He looked up at the elephant and said, Look, just because you don't know the answer, doesn't mean you have to take it so personally. <laughs> and there's a lot of people out there like the lion today. The purpose of his power was to make sure everybody else knew he was king. And in the animal and human kingdom, power is often a tool of intimidation and subjugation. And for many, that's what the perks of power are all about, dominating, dictating, and even destroying. That's not what the power of the Holy Spirit is about in our lives. There is a much greater power. The power of the kingdom of God has an entirely different purpose. And the power Jesus promised and provided through the person of the Holy Spirit isn't to intimidate or impress, it's to impact the world around us. To impact this world for Jesus Christ. And we, and we need to do that. Lloyd Ogilvie said this, the power of Pentecost is for people. It's God's power for the paralysis of the world. And the world, man, and what, and he said that a long, long, long time ago, actually. And man, the world is paralyzed right now and needs a, a spirit-empowered group of Christians to go out and touch them with the gospel of Jesus Christ and the only answer, Jesus. And we can do that through him. And so th that's what's supposed to be happening. In Acts chapter 3, um, there, the, just this great story in the first 10 verses. One, one of my absolute favorite stories in all the Bible, of course, the whole Bible, I guess, is my favorite story. So I, I keep saying, this is my favorite, this is my favorite, this is my favorite, but, and, and I guess it changes week to week, but this is one just absolutely awesome story. And so first of all, 
So what just happened was 120 people had just met in the upper room and God came down, touched them, changed their lives totally. Peter was one of those people. Peter and John were a couple of those people, actually, that were in that room when the Holy Spirit came down and totally, absolutely, completely changed their life and being. He, he just, it was an incredible thing. And, and remember, Peter just, not this many weeks before, just like 10 or so weeks before, denied Jesus. Jesus was being on trial, denied him three times. He, he couldn't stand up in front of a little girl. And, and Acts chapter 3 is a picture of Peter's life being changed by the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and there's a whole bunch of things that happen actually in Acts chapter 3 if you read the whole thing. But this first 10 verses is absolutely amazing. What happened here is amazing. One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. Remember, this is just like a day or two after, <laughs> after Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, okay? This is just a couple days later. Now a man crippled one from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold? This is, this is the, the most Pentecostal verse in the entire Bible, I think. Silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. So that's, that's basically what happened. <laughs> if I had three points to a sermon, the first one would be what happened. What happened was Peter and John saw this man, and when his attention was upon them, this incapacitated man who had to be carried to this temple gate every day to beg, and truly had probably passed him many, many, many times before, because if you read it, especially if you read it in the King James Version, it says they were on their way to the temple to pray as was their habit. It was something that they did. At the time of prayer, they went to the temple to pray, and this guy was there every day, and they walked right, be right beside him every day. And on this day, it was different because they were seeing the world through different eyes, through spirit-empowered eyes, they were seeing things in a different way, and they looked at this man and thought, man, why is he sitting there? <laughs> and uh, they, they didn't just dismiss him like we often do when we see a need. They, they changed. They, they became agents of change, agents of a miracle in this man's life. They, they were the ones that did it. And so well, after talking to him, they, then he jumped up. He followed their instruction after they reached out and they said, we don't have any silver or gold. We're, we're not going to give you maybe what you're expecting. One of the things that I've always liked about that, that passage was he looked up at them expecting. And you know what? There's a lot of times in our lives we just need to look up at Jesus expecting and we need to and in a lot of other people's lives we need to be Jesus to them then a man named Jesus is something that I've said a lot of times and that man named Jesus needs to come into people's lives through you then they need to people need to be able to say I need to stay in front of the camera I guess people need to say that a man named Jesus walked into their lives and you know what 
The only way a man named Jesus, I don't need to stay in front of the camera. I can wander around. They can handle it. Okay. The, people need to say that a man named Jesus walked into their lives. Charlie, that man needs to be you sometimes. Over there when you're cruising around Harrington doing the stuff of life, suddenly Jesus needs to show up in, in somebody's life through a spirit-empowered, Bible-believing Christian who will look at somebody totally different than they ever saw him before and go, man, I see your need. And reach out and meet that need. That's the, the power to impact somebody's life. So that's what happened. <laughs> the second thing, why did it happen? I think there's three reasons that miracle happened. The first one is faithfulness. Go back to the fact that as was their habit, they were walking that way. It was, it was being faithful to God. And, and when we're faithful to God, we will know what to do. I, I, that, in fact, here's another way to put it in, somewhere in my notes. When we do what we know, we'll know what to do. They were doing what they knew. They, it's, it's time to go pray. It's time to go to the temple and pray. And it was something that they did every day. And when we do what we know, we'll know what to do. And there's a whole bunch of things that we're supposed to know what to do every day. We just know what to do. And, and so God isn't expecting us to walk around being someone. Let's see. Ooh. So heavenly minded that we're no earthly good. We're just, we need to be people that are some earthly good. We need to have our minds on heaven, absolutely. We need to have our minds on Jesus, absolutely. But while we have our minds on Jesus, that should cause us to see what's going on right in front of us. And here's the man at the temple gate that they'd passed by so many times before, and suddenly they knew what to do. And it was because of faithfulness. It was just walking. It doesn't mean that you have to be something spectacular and so super spiritual that the world can't even get along with you. You just need to be faithful and just keep being faithful and just keep doing it. The second reason that the miracle happened was focus. He said, they said, we don't have any silver or gold. And, and when they said that, remember what it said? It said, Peter looked straight at him, as did John, so they were focused. And then the man looked at them. There was this focus going on. And, and in John's mind, he finally focused. Peter and John stood there and actually focused on this man. They, they focused on him. And when we, you know, a lot of times in our lives, there's needy people all around us. I could be really mean. All, all you got to do is drive to Spokane, pull off at the Maple Street Bridge exit, and there's one guy. There will be one guy standing there. And there will be another guy waiting for his shift <laughs> right around the corner. And they have it. They actually, by the way, just in case you don't know, and I'm not recommending giving money to these people by any stretch of the imagination. Give to Union Gospel Mission. Give to places like that that reach out and meet their needs in other ways. But what do you do when you see those people? And, and, and what I was going to say, they do have shifts. This guy has from 10 to 12. That guy has from 12 to 2. And that guy is waiting for his, really truly waiting for his shift to come. Give to the Union Gospel Mission. <laughs> but what do we do when we see those people? We don't look at them. We don't focus on them. In fact, we just kind of go, no, I'm not going to look that way. Because if I look that way, he's going to come over here. 
and, and uh, I would say only give to those people if God <laughs> speaks audibly to you and says, give that guy 50 cents or something. That would be the only way I would do that. But in this case, Peter and John focused on this guy. So there was faithfulness because they were doing what God had them doing every day. And then they focused, all of a sudden they focused on him and focused on his real need and go, why is this guy sitting here every day? Why is this happening when there is the name of Jesus that we were singing about just a little while ago? We can't, we don't have anything to give you except this. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. You know what? A lot of times we feel like we don't have anything to give anybody, but you know what? If you have Jesus, you have something to give a lost and dying and very needy world. And we need to start focusing on those people that have such great need and, and pour into their lives. They, they finally saw it, and the and the third reason, so there's faithfulness, focus, and then there's really wholeness. That would be the third reason something happened. But what I have. Do you realize? Do you realize that most of the world cannot say what I have? I give you in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. Most of the world does not have Jesus. So there are people out there all over that have no understanding of the fullness that is, that is within you. They, they have no understanding that most of the world, I, I had one person there, there's so many people out there. One person came up to me yesterday afterwards and said, <laughs> nice speech. And I was like, I, I totally knew the source. And I was like, cool. Thank you. I knew exactly what they meant. And they were, they were really glad that I had shared what I shared. And, and that was the way they saw it. And, uh, There's a, there's a lot of people that don't understand it, and that's why I am passionate today and every day about the name of Jesus because Jesus is it. And the fullness that we have, the fullness of life, the fullness of everything, the fullness of the Holy Spirit is something that even some people that have Jesus don't understand fully. <laughs> and uh, you have a fullness that other people need. And uh, what I have, what I've been given, I give to you. Hey, that sounds familiar too. Freely you have received. Freely give. What I've been given through the power of the Holy Spirit, I give to you. And, and we need to be people that, that will do that. So, I kind of, what happened, <laughs> why it happened was because of faithfulness, focus, and fullness. Can it happen today? That may be the most important question that I ask. Can it happen today? Yes. Yes, it can happen today. Yes, it needs to happen today. The, the power of the Holy Spirit needs to be working in your life, in and through your life, reaching out to other people. Jesus, here, here's, th this is something that I found, <laughs> just, this is absolutely amazing. Jesus healed in a, many ways. All of them were miraculous. And on 21 occasions, he healed through his spoken word. Sometimes we just need to speak the word through the power of Jesus to someone. He just spoke it and it happened. 13, uh, 13 times he healed by touching someone. You know what? The, the Bible says, those who believe will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Some people, I've had a lot of people tell me, you know, I don't know how to pray. <laughs> it doesn't even say you need to know how to pray. 
What it says is, you need to believe in Jesus. Those, these signs will accompany those who believe. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. They will lay hands on the sick and pray a flowery King James prayer. With all the these and thous and exactly right words, it doesn't say that. It says they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. In other words, you know what? Somebody's sick around you and you know Jesus, you believe in him, you can walk up to them without saying one single word. Put your hand on their shoulder or if God directs you to put your hand on the place where it hurts if they have a headache or something, and that's all you got to do. And they recover. Thirteen times he healed by just touching. Some, nine times people were healed in the course of his preaching and teaching. Just while he was speaking. Eight times he healed by driving out demons. Another eight times he healed because someone other than the sick person demonstrated faith in him. Seven occasions he healed because the sick person had faith. Four times Jesus healed because he was moved with compassion. And at least one time he healed someone who touched him. Another one of my favorite passages in the Bible. You know what? You need something from Jesus today? Reach out and touch him this morning. We need the miraculous in the church today. We need the miraculous in the world today. There's people that are broken that need to be fixed. And the only way they can be fixed is by the power of God. And the power of God is going to be demonstrated to them. Yes, it can happen today. The power of God is not only going to be demonstrated to them, but given to them through us. And it's only God's power that can put broken people back together again. And there are just so many broken people. We need to be the ones that will do that. And I want to encourage you today to let the power of the Holy Spirit work through you. Not power to dominate or even demonstrate. Power to impact people's lives. That's what should happen. Um, let's, let's sing one more song and just let the power of the Holy Spirit work in you and I pray that you'd be encouraged today to let the power of the Holy Spirit, you have something that the world needs. And I want to encourage you to let the power of the Holy Spirit work in and through your lives to a hurting world that's all around us and maybe more than ever before with these fires that have just happened and all of the pandemic that's going on. There are so many hurting people that we can reach out to and we need to be the, the agents of God right here, right now. Amen. We can't do it ourselves, but the way you make can. Yeah. Let's sing that.
for her again. My sister's been sick. Yesterday we prayed at the farm and I sensed that I should have done, done something and I didn't. But I'm going to do it now. Ethan and Logan, put your hands on Aunt Erin. We're going to pray for her. If you know of someone else in the room that needs healing right now, reach out to them. If you're especially, you know, family members close to them, you can reach towards Aaron, but if someone else needs healing, you can reach towards them too. Thank you, Lord. You are great. And we ask right now for your power to be evident. I pray that you would heal Aaron. In the name of Jesus, Satan, you have to flee. We rebuke the enemy attack on her life right now. She is serving you and you are not in control. Jesus 
Jesus. Touch her back, her neck. Put it into place by your power. We rejoice in your healing that will be evident. And we thank you. for healing for everyone else that needs it in this place. Jesus, make yourself known through your miracle working hand right now. Bring physical healing, bring emotional healing, bring strength to those who are exhausted. May they rise up and walk out of this place sensing your power evident in their lives. And may it be a testimony to family and friends and co-workers around that you are a miracle working God. And may they come to us and want to know you because they see your power evident in us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your healing today. extra strength for Amy and Gil and Jed as they go back home there won't be so many family members around to distract and with whom to talk so God I pray that you would be extra close this week and they would sense your presence Thank you, Jamie, for demonstrating the message this morning. <laughs> that's, that's what's supposed to happen, just a demonstration of, uh, of walking the way we're supposed to walk. Um, and Sharon, remind, I read her an email that I got this morning from Irv Dalen. For, and if you didn't know who that was, it was just here. That's Jamie, <laughs> my niece, missionary to Dominican Republic. And... Uh, doing an amazing work there in that country, changing lives through the power of the Holy Spirit. But I uh, got an email this morning from one of Mark's, probably Mark's best friend when he was a teenager, Irv Dalen. And Irv had a few questions and then he finished, finished with this. He said, great service, by the way. Didn't expect to feel the Holy Spirit at a memorial service. <laughs> My, in my heart, I'm thinking, why not? <laughs> I, just a demonstration, uh, uh, once again, of who Jesus is in our lives and, and, and how he, he walks with us and in us. And, and in a sense, yeah, people aren't expecting. A lot of times around us, people aren't expecting the Holy Spirit or Jesus to suddenly show up in their life. They might, might not be expecting it. They might even know who or what they're looking for, but it's Jesus. And you are Jesus to them. So I'm praying that I'll hear testimonies of people coming up and saying, then a man named Jesus showed up in my life. So uh, as you go, in the way that you would. <laughs> Preach, the kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. And I think we have a different way of going on the video today. Thanks for being here this morning. Have a great week in the name of Jesus.